Hey everybody, welcome into the Nesson Studios. Michaela Vernava joined via Skype by Joey Logano, the driver of the number 22 Team Penske Ford Fusion. And Joey, you are down in Daytona getting ready for a fresh start to a new season. I don't want to dwell too much in the past, but have to address the fact that you didn't have a great year in 2017 after having a terrific three years. I just want to know what you can take from last season and build off it to be better this year. Well, I think there's a lot of things, you know, um, you know, you learn the most during a, a struggling season. Um, and after kind of going through a, a struggling season before, uh, I realized that, you know, God teaches you more in those moments than, uh, than when you're winning. And uh, sometimes you got to have a kind of a reality check every now and again to set you up for the future and, and um, the decisions you'll make going into the future. So, um, you yeah, know, I learned a lot. I think our, ter our team learned a lot and we stuck together since then. And I think that's important to, to know that we stayed as a team and, uh, and we'll be able to forge forward um, this season and the momentum was starting to build at the end of last season and it's already started with the clash last week um, and being able to finish second there and uh, and try to um, you know, get another Daytona 500 victory and, and uh, kick off the season on a good note and keep it rolling to Miami. So you did get second place in the clash and your teammate Brad Keselowski coming in first. I imagine that's got to be exciting but you did win the clash last year as well. How do you take that momentum this year and make sure you start off successful in this season? Well, I think, you know, just being in that race is a, it's a nice little, um, you know, you knock off the rust a little bit, but there's a lot of questions that were answered with a lot of the rules changes for, for Daytona, uh, specifically uh, with the cars and, and the pit stops. And um, we had a new spotter this year up on top of the roof uh, calling it for me. So um, it was a really good way for all of us to work together um, and get ready for the biggest race of the year, which is the Daytona 500. So um, it's a nice way to get us rolling. And, um, and like you said, keep that momentum, know that we, you know, we still got it. And, uh, be able to, you know, I guess I kick off the season great, not only here in Daytona, but into, you know, Atlanta and the West Coast swing. And specifically speaking of Daytona, Fords have been very successful in plate races. So what are you expecting to be able to do with your car in this race? Well, hopefully go faster than all the rest of them and win, right? <laughs> That's the goal. Um, but I think, you know, some of the success from the Ford camp is that, um, you know, we're all willing to work together. You know, we all realize that for one of us to win, yes, we all want to win, but for one of us to do that, uh, we have to work together. Um, we And I think not just the drivers understand that, but the other crew chiefs understand, the teams understand that we need to be able to uh, work together and then fight it out at the end for the win. Um, and I think we... We get that, and that's what makes us successful when we come to the racetrack. Now, I need to congratulate you on the birth of your son. First of all, love the name, Hudson Joseph. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's um, he's incredible. I tell you, he's such a, uh, a blessing to um, you know be able to hold your own son and just think about the potential um, that, that he can have and what he's going to do with the struggles he's going to have and, and the little things that are going to be such a big deal for him and, and the things that he'll – It'll look great past. I don't know. There's so much. Uh, it's hard to explain it, right? When everyone always says, you'll understand when you have kids, and you go, oh, okay. Now um, to actually kind of see that, I, I understand that now. You've shared some awesome pictures on your Instagram account and on Twitter. He is adorable, first of all. And I like that you put out, I can't wait to see what he does with his life. Do you have any specific hopes or anything that you're hoping to mold him into? I hope whatever he does, he's the best in the world at it. That's uh, that's what um, I think is a good goal to be, is just uh, whatever you choose to be, be the best at it. If you choose to be a garbage man, be the best one there can possibly be. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, as a father, the, I guess some of the qualities I'd like to instill into him. And um, if he wants to be a race car driver, great. If he doesn't, I'm okay with that too. Um, you know, I want him to be what, what he wants to be and be his own, his own self and not, uh, you know, want to be just like me. I want him to be just like himself. How does being a father change your perspective, the way you look at your sport and what you do? And then also this past month, having a newborn while you're preparing mentally and preparing for a new season. Yeah, we watch a lot of races together at three in the morning when he won't go to sleep. <laughs> we watch films together now. So that's, that actually works out pretty good for me. Uh, and then it actually kind of soothes them and it works out pretty good. So. Uh, We've watched Daytona a few times. We've watched about the first six races already, um, and, and that's been pretty fun. And uh, but it definitely changes the game quite a bit. And um, you know the, the way you prepare and the time 
that you take uh, and, and you know basically you don't want to right it's, you, you don't want to go away from home you, know, you want to do everything at home and be with them as much as you can but you got to keep them in mind what the job is and, um, and going out there and, and supporting and um, you know being a, a good father sometimes doesn't mean that you have to be home all the time sometimes it means you, you got to uh, go out there and, and do the work uh, part of it as well so uh, you know, keeping that in mind keeps me motivated now another photo that I love that you shared I saw this on your Twitter account was that you this was just a couple weeks ago stopped to help a woman change her tire and she asked you if you had ever popped a tire before and you said that you just laughed what was that experience I mean did you just see that she needed help and pulled over what went down yeah, I literally just saw her on the side of the road and um, saw she had a flat tire and I thought, well, that, that stinks. I know that feeling. So I just went over there and changed her tire. It really wasn't a big deal. My wife was laughing at me. So she took the picture over there and I thought that was funny. But um, yeah, she goes, did you ever uh, pop a tire? And I go, oh, more than you know. <laughs> I could probably pull up a few videos, but uh, I, I didn't get into it. Just changed the tire and, and she got back on her way, which is great. So. Uh, so it was good. I thought, you know, if one of my partners is AAA, and I felt like, you know, as a you know ambassador for AAA, I feel like I should I do my part right here. So it was, it was fine. Well, it must have been a different sort of point of view for you because although I like how you say, if you only knew, but usually if you're popping a tire, you have your crew changing it out for you. I mean, before then, when was the last time you actually did change a tire? Oh shoot. I change tires quite a bit, actually. <laughs> I have a lot of older cars, and they usually break down a lot on the side of the road. So I'm good for a couple of AAA calls a year. But the tires, I can change the tires. But some of the stuff is not fixable on the side of the road for the things I break. So, um, you know, actually, more than you think, just I haven't changed around a race car in a very long time. Now, Joey, I also want to ask you, I know you're a Connecticut native, and you did say as soon as you saw sat down, you saw our Hartford Whalers mug behind me. And you used to play hockey yourself. I'm curious what made you take the racing direction as opposed to continuing with hockey? I wasn't very good at hockey. <laughs> That's pretty much what that was. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed playing hockey. And to this day, I still love the sport. Um, but really, um, I got behind the wheel of a car and I took to it naturally and I loved it. Um, all I wanted to do when I got home was to drive my go-kart around the yard and tear up everybody else's yards as well. And, and I, I just loved it. That's what I wanted to do and just make laps. And um, so I've just been able to kind of just keep following my dream. Um, you know, it's been a challenge, but it's been a lot of fun. And I've had a great family support behind me to, to help make that happen. And I saw that you were out at the Capitals Flyers game when you were promoting Daytona 500. What NHL team do you support? Do you still follow hockey? I always like to I think it's interesting to see what athletes if they follow other sports. Yeah, I, I probably I'd say I follow the NHL from a distance. Um, you know, I love the sport. I love watching it. I don't have as much time to just really get into the, the nitty gritty and knowing the players and the stats and all that stuff. But I love watching the sport. I love watching the intensity. And when I got to go up there, uh, you know, with NBC Sports and be able to you know, call the, some parts of the game, at least the first period, um, from in between the benches, uh, it was incredible to see the speed, the accuracy, um, you know, how quick they are. So good. Um, and, you know, sitting on the ice is, is one thing, given there's a glass in front of you, but there's no glass that was in front of us. So it's kind of the danger factor came in, and I thought that was neat. And then when you're in between the benches and the, the players start mouthing off to each other, that was the best. And uh, I don't know if I was helping the situation because I was laughing my butt off when they started, you know, talking crap to each other. That was the best. Um, I was just hoping I didn't get my butt kicked for laughing at <laughs> Oh, well, that's funny. I know you have to have cat-like reflexes. You never know when a puck's going to come flying your way if there's no glass to protect you. But what kind of similarities, when you're saying being at ice level, you're able to observe between hockey players and drivers and also the trash talking factor? I know that there can be some trash talk or some swear words thrown around in your headsets and your radios on race day. 
no, no. <laughs> There's a, there, there is a lot of similarities, just in sports in general, right? I think athletes have a lot of things in common. Um, and that's what I love watching other sports for and talking to other athletes is the way they prepare um, for an event, you know, whether it's, um, you know, they have their alone time, they put their headset on and they do their thing, or are they out in the open doing, you know, the way they mentally prepare, uh, I think to me is very interesting, um, you know, for, for me to just kind of hear that and, and their training um, physically and, and um, what their practices and how they handle team situations and all that. There's so many similarities that come uh, through just kind of just competition in general, and I think that's fun to um, talk to. And I always have a million one questions, but I mean an athlete because I say, "Oh, what are you doing this? What do you do this?" And I try to compare notes just to see what what the similarities are, and maybe find something I can do better. It's interesting, Joey. Thanks so much for the time. We're excited to watch you compete this season. Best of luck. All right, sounds good. Thanks.